Welcome back viewers. Um, we will start off with national debt of Ghana and then go into the national debt to GDP ratio, which is the gross domestic product ratio. And Mr. Charles is going to get into the details of it so that we will understand what the national debt in relation, in correlation to national um, GDP, debt in, GDP. to the GDP, you know, um, shows. So let's see how it goes, because according to the data here, um, things are not looking good because it seems that the current government has doubled the borrowing, you know, but anyway, it's going to be explained. Just let's, let's it's carry on with it. Yes. Okay. Let's see how Great. it goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Mr. Eric Kudonko, once again for having me. Um, as you may probably uh, know, when we were discussing the inflation figures, we did actually indicate how you can use just the inflation mm -hmm. data to track how a government is it's performing. performing yeah. But I think coming up to the later stages of uh, using the inflation data, when we recorded a relatively lower inflation rate for Nanado Dangwa, which in, in, if you take it on a, on a, on a face value, value yeah. it may seem that there is a better economic performance, right? Mm -hmm. But as I was saying before, if you borrow money, mm -hmm. say you borrow, uh, say 20 billion, mm -hmm. and you hide 10 billion in a, in a, in a foreign a account, safe haven, yeah. In a safe haven, and you bring in 10 billion and use the 10 billion effectively mm -hmm. within the domestic economy, mm -hmm. it is not going to be inflationary. Mm -hmm. So it may it's not seem, going to be visible. Yeah. It's not going to be visible. So yeah. it may seem that the government is really doing well with the money that they have. Mm -hmm. But then the problem is that if we don't really look into so, how much they are borrowing, mm -hmm. right, from external sources and where those and those amounts are not properly attracted for yeah. tracked. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll make a joke, track, track and trace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> track and trace and then yeah. properly accounted for. Yeah. What then it's happens it's is that half of that money is gone. Somewhere. On the outside, hiding somewhere. Mm -hmm. When people, they finish government, they go drop that money. For drastic purposes. Correct. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you you got to you got to bring all that to the fore. But yeah. I think that mm -hmm. the borrowing, mm -hmm. the national debt, which once again, the data is from a very reputable source. Yeah. When we look at this data, we may be able to analyze it mm -hmm. and get to know if, you know, uh, uh, these monies that are being borrowed are actually being used. Being reflected in uh, the is it reflected, ordinary uh, is, it, is it reflected yeah. in the, in the mm -hmm. debt? Because the 10 with the debt, to, we will go into the debt to GDP, GDP ratio sure. as that's, well. That's where the uh, expose is all is all going to come up because yeah. when you the debt to gdp ratio it mm -hmm. basically shows that say if your debt goes up uh -huh. then potentially you should be if they you use that money effectively your speed. gdp mm -hmm. will also go, go up, up and, and it will not increase your it will not increase your debt to gdp ratio yes it will keep good. it it will keep it the same it or it will come make it lower. better yeah Mm -hmm. So we are going to look at those analysis. So I'm going to hold out this figure once again to the screen. Yeah. Uh, once again, from the same source. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put it there. I'll paste it there. But so just have a look. By F. Mm -hmm. Fletcher, once again, May 2020. This is mm -hmm. an IMF source. So it is a reputable source. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put it up to the screen. It's going to be made available once again. Yeah. So here... We have two lines. One line is running as a blue line, which is expressing the increment in billions of US dollars. Mm -hmm. This is how our debt is increasing, expressed in billions of US dollars. Mm -hmm. Then the top line, which is the red line, we've actually applied the rate as at, I think yesterday, yeah. uh, at uh, 5.85 CD to a dollar. Mm -hmm. And it gives the CD equivalent Mm -hmm. The CD equivalent is the red line. Yeah. It's the same sort of thing, but the CD shows it up a lot more. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I'm going to hold this up to the screen. Okay. So this is how the Ghana national debt looks like, right? So what you're going to find is that uh, as 
uh, early as 2014, uh, in terms of dollars, uh, Ghana's national debt was, I think, it was uh, 14.2 billion dollars, which uh, translate to 83. 83 billion uh, new Ghana cities, right? Now, come 2016, the borrowing had almost doubled under John Dramani Mahama to $21.9 billion. So as he took, let's say 14 is not even the time he took over. Mm -hmm. 14 is just in the middle at uh, 2014 is somewhere in the middle of John Dramani Mahama's government but in just two years mm -hmm. he had doubled more probably uh, almost doubled mm -hmm. the national debt to 21.9 billion dollars now Nana also picks it up from that point and come 2020 Nana is doubled the um, more than doubled the the, the, the national debt from 21.9 billion dollars in in 2016 to 45.2 billion dollars mm -hmm. so he's borrowed an extra twenty there about 24 billion dollars mm -hmm. in just a space of four years. four years that is an astronomical level of borrowing there is there are further figures down from 2020 onwards but those are projected figures and as you can see the figures are just going up and up and up but to double the ghana debt mm -hmm. in just a space of four years mm -hmm. more than double mm -hmm. and this has been billions of us dollars this is a concern mm -hmm. and when we look at the debt to gdp um, uh, uh, ratio it is once again going to expose so we are not just sticking to the inflation figures as the as the, as determinant the performance in the cases uh -huh. yeah. but now we are looking at the mm. debt to gdp ratio and the total national debt mm -hmm. uh, also as an analysis okay so if you have all this information at least you can make an informed decision, decision. how yeah. to go to the ballot box good and vote and vote now, this one here, this figure here, this is the jet debt to GDP um, ratio, which is ex once again is expressed as a percentage. And so the way that it works is that um, when you when you have your debts, right? When you have your debts and you match it with obviously your productivity is is good then that means that you know you, you sort of you have a fairly balanced debt to gdp ratio right so for example when and and obviously zero is good 100 is uh, that means that your total uh, debts is equal to your total productivity in the year obviously your total debts is equal to the pro total productivity if that is the case it's going to be it's going to make it very difficult for you to finance your loans you know you can easily go bankrupt all right so for example under john dramani mahama 2014 the ghana debt to gdp ratio is 51.16 percent right so come 2016 a figure is 57.12 percent it actually shows that uh, John Dramani Mahama is borrowing more money, but it is not reflecting in the productivity. Mm -hmm. The productivity is relatively falling compared to the amount of borrowing. So which means that the money that they got, they actually put it into projects more than... Um, uh, in effect, okay, we are not there just because we're just looking at the John Dramahani Mahama one okay. because in 14 he's 51, uh, 51.16 mm -hmm. by by 2016 he's 57.16. So, in that space of time, mm -hmm. you can see that he is borrowing money, mm -hmm. but it is not reflecting in productivity, mm -hmm. and that is why the debt to GDP ratio is going up. So, his borrowing is going up. But his productivity is not going up to match it. 
so the debt to gdp ratio is climbing up right so when we come to 2017 onwards nana picks it up from 57.27 percent right but come to the year 2020 nana's debt to gdp ratio is 63.46 percent so once again this is an indication that nana is borrowing a lot of money mm -hmm. obviously as we saw it in the debt figures he is more than doubled the the ghana national debt in just a space of four years mm -hmm. i mean something that will take like a almost like a lifetime to borrow that sort of money mm -hmm. these monies have been borrowed in just a space of four years you've more than double the national debt this is a critical a serious but when you once again translate it into debt to gdp ratio mm -hmm. you are going to see that the borrowing is not translating into, into productivity, productivity into productivity so which, means, something all right, which something. means that you're borrowing more money but your debt to gdp ratio is going up because it's not reflecting in productivity mm -hmm. we are going to try to analyze uh this mm -hmm. to see could it be something to do with the free shs mm -hmm. is it necessary mm -hmm. to give everyone that open floor to mm -hmm. uh, uh uh, have this free education mm -hmm. is it sustainable or are uh, some of these monies not converted that mo these monies that we're borrowing not converting mm -hmm. into productive uh, economic activity okay so um what you want us to deliberate on right now is it the comparison yeah we're going to yeah we're going to see how the national debt to gdp ratio that's right the, the national debt itself. yes 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 so we're going to look at the national debt itself okay so let's tackle the ndc first uh -huh. from mahama then we come to nana and we see the multiplication of borrowing that they've been doing correct and if that translates into, into the national into productivity. debt to gdp and then their productivity, into productivity yes so for example when you look at um, into all the data once again from a very reputable source we don't make these data up these yeah. are data that you can go and look it up yourself um so in 2014 when john dramani mahama takes over the not well he, he was still in office anyway mm -hmm. but when, that is where it starts mm -hmm. so far we can pick it up from, from it's 14 point two billion mm -hmm. i mean just to give you an idea in the times of a champion or even some early parts of the rollings administration our our borrowing was expressed in millions mm -hmm. it was in millions of us dollars it was never in billions, billions yeah. so we start to get into the billions under the rollings administration and it just kept going up billion maybe four billion five billion and it kept going up and up and up and up Probably, I think by the time, probably Rollins, uh, say 1992, 96, maybe we're looking at about 7 billion. But come to uh, uh, John Dramani Mohammed's time, mm -hmm. we have 14, okay. we have 14.2 billion. Yeah. This is just in four, 2014. By 2016, mm -hmm. he's increased the borrowing to 21.9 billion. So there's a difference of about almost 8 billion. In just two years just two years mm -hmm. now how does that translate into debt to GDP ratio yeah so for example if you increase your borrowing and you increase your productivity we pick the debt to GDP ratio mm -hmm. uh, at 2014 we pick it up at 51.16 percent yeah mm -hmm. but in effect if you increase the borrowing to 21.9 billion mm -hmm. And then you increase the productivity along the same lines mm -hmm. your debt to gdp ratio will continue to remain to at, at, mm -hmm. no it will continue to remain at 51 mm -hmm. when you match the debt with the productivity mm -hmm. it will continue to remain 51.6 but what we realize is that the debt to gdp ratio had risen to 57.12 mm -hmm. so what it is is that he borrows money mm -hmm. but it is not translating Reflecting into productivity, productivity and that is what causes the debt to gdp ratio to rise mm -hmm. okay. 
And that causes inflation, isn't it? Correct. It, it causes a whole lot. Well, in effect, when that uh, happens, what actually happens is that it's the way that you are paying back your debts. You are making it difficult. Mm -hmm. You are putting yourself closer to bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. We can't have another headache. Mm -hmm. Because any time we are borrowing this money, as Mr. Eric Good Uncle said previously, mm -hmm. we are losing our oil. We are losing our bauxite. We are losing uh, our gold. We are and the fine details, they're, they're not going to tell you, you know. Correct. Unless, I don't know if they publish any articles and they publish all these um, statistics from time to time for the public consumption. I don't know. But mm -hmm. these are some of the you know, yes, it, 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 the it, it, IMF statistics mm -hmm. that are there. They are graphs. They, are, yes. they don't lie. It's there. Yes. And so mm -hmm. the next thing is that when Nana then picks it up from 2017, mm -hmm. at that point it's at 26.2%. At 2020, it's 45.2%. Uh, oh, he picks it up from 26 um Point from two. 2017 uh, 17 is 26.2%. Billion mm -hmm. the national debt 22 26.2 billion dollars, mm -hmm. but by 2020 he is doubled it to 45.2 billion cities. So he picks, let's say, if you go into New Ghana City, 128 billion uh, uh cities, mm -hmm. but come 2020 is 264 billion, mm -hmm. it is more than doubled, mm -hmm. right? And so when you more than double this figure, then your productivity should also be more than double in order to retain the 50, 57.12 debt to GDP ratio that you inherited. Mm -hmm. and you, if you match your increment of your debt with the productivity, then you're gonna have a flat line. Mm -hmm. But on this occasion, by 2020, the debt to GDP ratio had increased from 57.12 to 63.46%. What it means is that Akufuado is also doing the same thing as Mahama. So he's borrowing, uh, or even maybe I'll say the Akufuado magnitude is actually much, much higher, mm -hmm. relatively higher than the is it, 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 the, so it means that the, you can't use the, the, one indicator the, what to assess uh -huh. the performance of a government uh -huh. all these are indicators uh, uh, that uh, uh, pointers that we can use to assess to the analyze, performance yes yeah because so so this actually shows that when you increase the debt you couldn't in double the productivity yeah and so you are now your debt to gdp ratio is going so which means that the money that has come into the coffers of the government in is terms of the use borrowing judiciously wisely to have a, a, a raising productivity, productivity. productivity good so now this comes to the question that does it mean that the free shs is taking all the money and the next question is should the free SHS be means tested? Means that those that are in need of it should get it. And then those that can pay should pay. And is it sustainable as you were talking about? Is it sustainable? Because it needs that kind of assessment to, to, to come to the realization that uh, 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 is the government or are the government going to sustain it for the rest of the lives of Ghanaians? Or somebody's going to come in one day and say that, no, I don't want to continue with the free SHS again. So I think ideally, even in this country, if you're going into school or university or anything like that, the, the loans and the, 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 the freebies that we have is means tested. Some of this, some of it are grants and some of it are loans, but it's means tested. So they assess your fiscal condition, your, your financial situation and then come to the realization or come to the to the completion that okay maybe you are um they have to give you 20 pounds or they have to give you 30 pounds or have, they have to give so it's means tested so my question is the free shs one is it sustainable two should it have to be uh, means tested so that it can lead up to the sustainability of that you know project mm -hmm. that's my question great 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Rico Kudonko, for all these um, uh, additional contributions you've made uh, towards uh, this uh, assessment of the national debt and the debt to GDP ratio. Now, for example, as I was saying, the, the debt increased and the, it appears that the GDP it did not translate into mm -hmm. increasing yeah. the GDP and keeping the line flat. Rather, mm -hmm. we started to see a growth, the growth. in yeah. the debt to GDP right. ratio, which, is, which means that we are putting ourselves more closer into a bankrupt situation mm -hmm. right now how do we analyze this it is possible when nana inherited uh this um uh, government mm -hmm. from john dramani mahama we all know that there were problems to do with teachers pay electricity uh, nurses pay uh, civil servants, I don't know if they were even paid properly. There was a lot of back payments that the previous government could not finance the pay of, you know, uh, public mm. public uh, servants and public workers. Yep. So you had that problem there mm. as number one. So you needed quite a lot of money to finance. Those things are not once you say it's not reflected as productivity so is back it's payments output per month. Uh -huh. you are doing back so payments you get the money and then you pay it you just reflect pay it out uh -huh. so that could maybe explain part of the doubling of this uh of this debt so you kind of borrow because they inherited debt so they needed to clear all the you need to you need to finance this mm. secondly we have things like failing banks banks that are fail under the under jo the john dramani mahama's mm -hmm. uh, administration yep. uh, and so uh, once again mm -hmm. it could be that the government also needed some of this liquidity to finance uh, people whose monies had got trapped in these banks mm -hmm. these failed banks so that can also be an Probably. issue mm -hmm. then also you are looking at um the free shs idea i think um to be very sincere maybe as Ghanaians, and this is why we're bringing this information to you mm -hmm. i think that free shs song has been played um under the current government we have really juiced it up mm -hmm. and used it to blind the the, the public mm -hmm. as in what is going on it is a good initiative mm -hmm. let's all face it it is a good initiative but then the the question is that number one is it sustainable and number two could it have been means tested so for example it could then be that you've borrowed the money you are investing in the education of the nation it is an investment mm -hmm. so then you're dishing out that money so you're not necessarily seeing any... the money coming back in terms of productivity mm -hmm. and this is probably may also explain why right, the Nana's debt to GDP ratio to GDP has ratio. gone up even though he's doubled up the um, national debt, national debt. Mm -hmm. in all fairness I, I must admit that I am not happy mm -hmm. about the increment in the national debt mm -hmm. it's huge you is know, it is it due to to, the, to, to the, double the, it in just four years to the areas that he inherited you know to pay these workers to pay all these um teachers the <laughs> nurses the free shs that is not really calculated uh, because you know um as we were all discussing mm -hmm. it, it's got to be um means tested so that those who really need, need it those, will have it yes and then those who can pay should pay should pay so, so that at least it leaves a little bit of revenue money in the cafes to, of to the invest nation in hospitals, and then they can invest in other areas. hospitals and all these so in effect mm -hmm. if we were trying to analyze and ex obviously to explain what has really happened it could be the fact that because when when we look further down the line there is a projection to 2024 which which probably. actually shows that the gdp to debt ratio will come down to the 57 level mm -hmm. as he inherited but that is a projection mm -hmm. a projection is not an actual yeah so we we can only sort of project that okay he invests in the case education mm -hmm. and then hopefully in the next few years mm -hmm. it starts to turn into productivity
So this is it's just uh, it's just a projection. It may end up not being at that level. It may end up to be seventy or ninety and get worse and worse. So I personally am not happy that in just a matter of four years mm -hmm. you can double the national debt in billions of US dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you go up by one billion dollars, that's a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. But if you go up in excess of uh, twenty something billion in just a matter of four years, mm -hmm. that is definitely a it's it is a concern. Yeah. So when we look at the free SHS, as Mr. Kudonko was saying, and mm -hmm. um, if the thing can be means tested, if you can find a way of finding out the guy who was not actually going to school mm -hmm. because they are selling. Uh, their parents do, cannot afford, they don't have any formal uh, means of income, or you cannot assess their income, they are poor, then those people could be given that kind of a scholarship, free SHS. Or were they thinking that means tested is going to be another kind of job or another kind of um, um, cost because they need to employ people to do the assessment? So I don't know if they it, thought about it, that. And it, they, in all fairness, that can were, also be another. They were thinking, oh, uh, this is going to that can be another, another complication. So why not roll it in and then uh, everybody comes and enjoy? But and I enjoy it. At the same time, it's quite it's dangerous. dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous in at least if you have um, a, a structural, you yes. know, it, assessment. It shouldn't be too difficult to assess. Be, yeah, because how much are you going to pay mm -hmm. those administrators case, to, um, you know, case? load workers mm. that will handle these this assessments and then and, and computerize it and computerize is it so yes it is I, worth i you. think it's worth doing it is it worth to you. save that money and correct. then invest it into other um, correct viable correct. Um, projects, projects. Yeah. it is worth you mm. putting in that money to make sure that is the guy who is really poor mm -hmm. and even the guys that can pay you can even make it half price for them mm -hmm. that will bring in revenue you know, because I think that I, I, I heard revenue. somebody saying that some of these people can pay, they can pay their school fees and they've been paying all along anyway. So why make, so it, free why make it free for them? They can always pay. And then those who are critically in need, need. those who are genuinely in need. need of that free SHS, it's those should are, be assessed the and then given the opportunity, given opportunity. To, to carry on with their education. Good. And when you do it that way now, you are getting revenue coming in. And you're getting value for money. And so also, it's, good, it's also become sustainable. Yes. You the sustainability mm -hmm. is a problem because how long are we going to keep this thing going? Because Correct. money is going to be Correct. finished in the coffers and then it's going to be something uh -huh. else. We have to keep borrowing and borrowing. So our borrowing our national debt is going to keep rising and doubling and tripling. And, and so if another government comes, so Nanado Danka uses this um, uh, 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 song, mm -hmm. this VSH is song or uh, propaganda or whatever, to get a second term, once he is done and he is gone and whoever picks it up mm -hmm. may probably find that Look, economically, there's no money. This it's is not, not this is not feasible. So not he's going to so say, "Oh, I counsel it," mm -hmm. or maybe he's going to be fearing to say, "I'm not going to counsel it so that I can win another election." It doesn't matter how much it's going to mm -hmm. cost. Then we keep borrowing, and we keep doing this silly thing. It, it is silly. So we need to. So I really, think leaders um, of Ghana, um, MPs, um, you have the power to talk to the president. You guys sit down at a round table and think about this free SHS. It's a very good thing. It's a good initiative. Absolutely. Mr. Charles was talking about Absolutely. But for the education. Need, for you the can't need. go wrong with education of the country because that, that builds the country, you know. Yes. But it's got to be means tested. So Let that those, those who can pay, who can pay should pay. pay. And those who are in need should get it. Should get it. So if it's means tested, it means that the ordinary Ghanaian that works in the farm can afford for his or her child to go to school because it's means tested. And then the bank manager who sits in the bank in an air condition can pay for his or her That's child. Right. So let them pay. So let them pay. Why make it free for all of them? Because they, they've been paying all these years uh -huh. anyway. So do it such a, that it becomes and if it's In this country, Nana, you've, you've, you've um, schooled here, you've, mm -hmm. you've been here and you know how the system works. And you know that when it comes to loans and schooling and all that, it's means tested. Apart from the um, lower primary and all that, the 
SHS and all that is is fully funded and and and, and means tested. So and and we can't even compare ourselves to um, UK or that's right. um, that's right. we don't America have, or, we the, don't or have the, the Germany and the European countries. Uh, we, we don't, don't have, have that, that resources. We don't have that capability, that facilities yes. to yes. even do that. So as we are capable of trying to help the ordinary citizen of Ghana then it means that we have to structure it very well so that it's going to be sustainable because if we don't do that it means that it's going to reach a time whereby we can't or the nation can't fund it again and you can't afford it yeah so and then please, say oh we've cancelled can it. you sit down round table mm -hmm. think about this thing it's a good initiative but it's not sustainable let's mm -hmm. find a way that to you know, it's going to help the nation to be work. sustainable. Yeah. Means testing. I mean, look at when you look at, um, say, in, in the times of Nkrumah, obviously Nkrumah did use that to win a lot of votes for the northern part of Ghana, mm -hmm. where there was free education for all in the north. Yes, at that time, they did look at the economic, the productivity in, in, the, in the northern part of Ghana. The climate, it was very, very hot and uh, uh, not the most desirable environment. You know, and also they noticed that, you know, the situation really did need that support. And that is why Nkrumah made it free. But it was sustainable because economically they knew that all the other regions with the, with the benefits and with the opportunities that the other regions do have, that they could actually afford for the people in the north to have that free education. It was needed. But my, my inference is if the resources of Ghana was channeled properly and then, you know, accounted properly for everything that we do. I think free SHS wouldn't have been means tested. We would have the funds to be doing all that. Mm -hmm. But things are not in their rightful structure. Things yes. are not in the rightful place. So monies are being siphoned, siphoned somewhere else mm -hmm. instead of coming into the community to help the nation and why. That is why it's not sustainable. That's why we are saying it should be means tested. Mm -hmm. But if all the, the, the resources of that were being used were being used judiciously according to the books mm -hmm. and everything and is in order, accountability is then, in its perspective, then I think then the nation that could, is doable could afford. But that yeah, but I'm okay. looking at it, I'm I'm concerned yeah, that yeah. Once Nana gets his second term using the free SHS as mm -hmm. his main slogan, and and, and it's very uh, it's very um, obvious, mm -hmm. attractive to the ordinary guy, yeah. uh, because they are only seeing it on the short term, the here and now, and they will vote. But bear in mind, in four years time, Nana will be gone, right? Mm -hmm. And it is a reality. In four years time, Nana will be gone. Can Ghana truly? Afford this. so I was saying that if people have more money in their pockets, can it also cause inflation? When people have more money in their pockets, can it cause inflation? Of course, when people have more money in their pockets, I mean that is inflation, yes. So does it mean that the free SHS can cause inflation? <laughs> because people are pocketing their school fees. <laughs> and they're having extra in their pockets. So obviously <laughs> they're having more in their pockets, isn't it? I'm, I'm just it's just no, an analysis. Well, well, well no, no, that analysis is different it's because, because it's the, not, the, the inflation the thing is, 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 is related to productivity. Okay. What causes inflation mm -hmm. is not the fact that the guy didn't pay his child's fees, mm -hmm. but it's actually related to productivity. Okay. So no. if all the monies that are in circulation can be directly pa uh, paired up with productivity at yeah. the mm -hmm. same level, then it will, it is not going to be inflationary. Okay. The guy could have a little bit more money in his pocket, but it's actually money that he's got for work that he did. Mm -hmm. You see, so when you get money mm -hmm. without doing any work, anyway. when you, because you are you from, a you are a cousin of a minister, you are a friend of minister, you are being four of you are being employed to do one job mm -hmm. a job that one person can do mm -hmm. that means there is money yeah coming in but mm -hmm. it's not much by productivity yeah but if everybody works to earn their money mm -hmm. and the system is clean then um the person could have a little bit more disposable income, income. 
Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that mm -hmm. is going to translate into inflation. Into inflation. Uh -huh. Okay, viewers, um, we are at the end yeah. words of the um, inflation and uh, um, the ratio, things. the national um, ratio to uh, debt to GDP, debt to GDP, GDP ratio, ratio and the national debt. We are at the end of the way. Of, of this program yeah. and we are coming back with your know, money supply gdp we, we interest rates and yes exchange rate, rate. Yeah. that um debt to gdp we've we've, we've already covered that. covered that so yeah. the public the budget, sector borrowing requirements and the budgets and all that we are coming with that but for the meantime please stay tuned share subscribe and like and we are coming and add your comments and add your comments but your we're going to be uh, posting this um the statistics data. the data on yes. the page so you can have a look and print it and then make an informed decision as you are going to the, to the ballot box. box on the 7th of december, december thank you for watching wonderful